Welcome back to Talking Story. My name is John Minton. Say for your next read, you want to gaze into the abyss between worlds and see if you can handle the tentacle malevolent force of evil gazing back at you. Say you want your next read to be cosmic horror. Well, I've got a reading list for you. Number one, first off, go to the source. You've got to go to H.P. Lovecraft. Now, a bit of a warning. H.P. Lovecraft is a man of his time. The language, probably not what you're used to if you haven't read Mr. Lovecraft before. And also, his observations and the way he feels can sometimes tend toward the misogynistic and the racist. So this does turn some readers off. But you're talking about the creator of the Elder Gods, the Old Ones, the Deep Ones, a pantheon that he created and then offered other writers to come and play in his sandbox. And why are current writers still playing in that sandbox? Because it's worthy, cool stuff. If you haven't tried Lovecraft before, I recommend Color Out of Space, The Dunwich Horror, uh, Call of Cthulhu, At the Mountains of Madness. But if you want something a little bit more modern, and maybe you want something that uh, kind of deconstructs his views <laughs> on women and, uh, and race, um, I got to recommend an author, the only author, that's won the Hugo three times in a row, three consecutive years for her Broken Earth trilogy, N.K. Jemsen, as a woman of color, takes cosmic horror and deconstructs it and makes it her own. She has a duology out, and uh, these two books are called The City We Became and The World We Make. Now, in this series, a mass amount of people will create an actual avatar of that place, a breathing avatar that stands between them, the people, humanity, and that horrible cosmic force of otherness that is trying to break through next door reality into ours and rip it all asunder. Continuing on with maybe some deconstruction of cosmic horror, on our number three on the list, I gotta recommend Victor Laval's Ballad of Black Tom. Now, I know Victor is a fan of Lovecraft, but reading Classic stories of Lovecraft as a man of color made him feel a certain way. So what did he do? He took a very famous Lovecraftian tale, the horror at Red Hook. He put a whole new spin on it, told it from the eyes of a person of color's protagonist, and made it his own. And wow, what a great story it is. You can't go wrong with this. You can't go wrong with Victor Laval's work at all. He has such a way of taking a, a, a fairy tale that we're all so used to and putting top spin on it, making it so relevant and so real for right now. Give it a shot. Now, also, I would still put along the lines of deconstructing Lovecraft and uh, his shortcomings, but now this is not a writer of color, and that is coming in at number four, Matt Ruff's Lovecraft Country. Uh, but now, this does have people of color as protagonists, and it does borrow um, a good helping of true history to set you in a time and place where, of course, black people traveling here and there, they had to have their own handbooks that they wrote on their own and passed to people to let them know routes that were safe, places that were safe to stay. But now in this set of interlocking stories, it's not just the real world dangers that are most fearsome. It is also that otherness from a different reality. Coming in at number five, Maybe you want something a little bit lighter. Maybe you just want that, um, that buddy movie kind of feeling. At number five, I would recommend Jonathan L. Howard's Carter and Lovecraft. Now, this takes a tried and true icon of that down on his luck detective. Now, in this story, he actually inherits a used bookstore. But who runs that bookstore and who lives above it? The last remaining member of Lovecraft's family. So. A very strange customer comes in one day looking for a very strange, hard to find book, the Necronomicon, and that sends these two on a wild adventure that shakes the foundations of their actual reality. So much so that the second book is in a completely different reality than the first. Now, if you just want something, and lovers of this genre know exactly what I'm gonna say here, you want something so familiar, 
You want something like a nice warm blanket to wrap around you. You want Stephen King's character work that you know, you love. I would recommend coming in at number six, Stephen King's Revival. His character work, so good here. Starting off with a, a pastor coming to a small town with his uh, a young pastor and his wife coming to a small town where he got his posting, meeting the young children there, making inroads, building the church with the community, and then a horrible catastrophic accident tears everything away from this man of the cloth, and he has to go on a journey of faith to find what really is happening beyond the veil of this physical realm, and what he finds will not be believed. Now, at number seven, I have a bit of a cheat, because not only, say, if you're in the mood for some type of uh, Jean Le Carré, World War II intrigue, but this is also so much more than one book. I would say start with F. Paul Wilson's Black Wind. You get that, that World War II intrigue and the axis of allies is not really the most scary thing humanity has to stand up against. No, 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 no. But also this starts off, or a good place to start off with F. Paul Wilson's entire secret history. And you're talking about moving into the books like The Keep, The Adversary Cycle, which is six books, the Repairman Jack series that just goes on. This one choice can give you reading for months and months and months and months. Now, coming in at number eight, oh, this is one of my favorite picks. This writer blazed onto the scene, only ever published two books short story collection called Dark Gods, and this one novel called The Ceremonies, coming in at number eight, T.E.D. Klein's The Ceremonies. A stranded, alien, godlike being biding his time through history until a suburb is built close to where his resting place is. From there, it's a possession story that you will not be able to put down. I just... I'm so sad that T.E.D. Klein did not give us more books to enjoy. What if, when you enjoy your cosmic horror, you may not want H.P. Lovecraft, but you want that gothic feel? If you're willing to give up the echoing calls for Heathcliff across the moors and maybe try a new location, I would recommend coming in at number nine, the sun-blasted locales of Mexico and Sylvia Moreno-Garcia's Mexican Gothic. I promise you, by the end of this book, there are so many Lovecraftian tropes that you will smell the wood pulp coming off the pages like you're holding an old copy of Weird Tales. Coming in at number 10. Say you want something a bit more visual in your next read, but you still want cosmic horror. DC Comics approached Joe Hill and said, can you put us a whole series of horror comics together? And he did just that with Hill House Comics. Now, he brought in some great writers, and there's all different types of stories, but he actually wrote two of the miniseries, and one of them was The Plunge. At number 10, The Plunge, written by Joe Hill, art by Stuart Immerman. Ghost ships, lost civilizations, people being mutated beyond their actual form. This has it all. And what a visual style. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's like James Cameron uh, grabbed hold of the camera and is doing a subject matter like John Carpenter's The Thing. I don't know if you read comics or not. It doesn't matter if you read comics or not. If you're looking for a cosmic read, pick this up. You will not be sorry. So there you go. 10 cosmic horror reads for you to try out. If you've got some of your own, Post them here, I'd love to hear what they are. And hey, you don't have to read one of these, but read something. Thanks for coming to Talking Stories.